Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to part 3 of the AFM March June 2022 so in part 1 I have discussed the question number 1 the net present value part 2 was about risk management currency risk management where we discuss forward future and options and this is part 3 we'll be discussing about reconstructions and reorganization okay so this is about a sale of a coffee shop we have to show the impact on the statement of financial position i've already highlighted it as i've explained it in part first part of this i've taken you through the question let me repeat again first requirement is expect calculate expected sale price second the impact of the sale on the statement of financial position focus earnings per share and vac b arguments for and against the decision to sell and third advantages and disadvantages of the suggestion made by non-executive director so now calculate the expected selling price for that we need our exhibits there are four exhibits okay let's go through the introduction normally this is usually giving you the background of the company i can extend it here So here, CC was established 20 years ago, offering high quality coffee at a reasonable price, as well as offering takeaway coffees. They marketed his coffee shop as being comfortable places in which to spend time and meet friends. For most of his life, the coffee shop served outperform his competitors and was able to obtain a listing six years ago. Most of the funds obtained from the listing were used to buy a struggling fast food chain and rebuilt, rebrand it as a fruit juice bar chain. The fruit juice bar chain and coffee shops are now separate divisions with CC within CC. The fruit juice bars offers a mix of drinks and salads with flavors from around the world. The appearance of the bars reflecting the global influences. This chain has been successful in terms of attracting fashionable young customers but has required considerable investment up until recently. Much of this investment has come from the surpluses generated by CG's coffee shops. However, the growth in the profits of the coffee shop have slowed in the last two years. You see, customer and media comment as suggested the CC's coffee shops now need significant expenditure. Competition in the coffee shop has led to some mergers. CC has just received an inquiry from a competitor about whether it would be interested in selling its coffee shop. The board is likely to accept a reasonable offer and believes the juice will be more prosperous in the future. A large cash inflow from the sale of the coffee shop would fund further expansion of the juice bar and the expenditure of on upgrading the existing bar juice. However, one of the CC's non-executive data has suggested an alternative arrangement. Under this arrangement, coffee shops would be run by a separate company. CC would hold a majority of the shares. Okay, what is this? This is the this thing because one of the requirement is this also. I think last requirement. CC would hold a majority of shares in this company, but hold but offer a minority of shares in the stock market. So usually it's nothing much for us to do our first requirement. Second, okay, you need to expand it and zoom it because it's very tiny. So the sale price of the coffee shop will be the sum of the present value of the predicted future cash flow. You have been given the four years predicted after tax profit. Okay, the after tax profit of CC is this, including the profits of this one. Can we assume to be 658 in year one if the coffee shops are not sold? Okay, this amount is assumed to be after tax cash flow. Second, capital investment in the coffee shop can be assumed to be 60 million in year one. In second to fourth, they will increase by 0.5% by $1 increase in after six profit. After year four, free cash flow is assumed to increase at 3.5% for the foreseeable future. Discount rate is 10%. Okay. Third, as I told you, always go through all the exhibits. Okay, you have been given the statement of financial position. And the fourth, other information. Okay. So the first one is the proceed. Okay, the proceed received from selling the coffee shop would be first used to pay up the 9% loan notes. The remaining would be used to enhance the expenditure on the non-current assets of juice bar. The return is 11, 17% pre-tax return.
okay you can highlight it the current net book value of non current asset at the coffee shop can be assumed to be this much 3 million 350 the profit on the sale of the coffee shop would be taken directly to retain earnings figures for the current asset and liability can be assumed to remain the same when the coffee shops are sold pre tax cost of debt is 8% it can be used to follow 7% when 9% loan notes are redeemed they have 500 million one dollar shares in issue currently trading at 8 per share it is expected to rise by 5% as a result of the sale of coffee shop asset beta is 0.7 this is for the juice bar tax is payable at 25% on profit and current free rate is 4% and return on market portfolio is 11% okay now first requirement is calculate the expected sale price of the coffee shop so rather than me doing this question what i have done is for the first two question i have shown you how to do it in excel right in this one i am going to take you through the answer okay the answer is here at the end of the exam when you submit it you can self mark and there you can get the answer okay i have zoomed it out because it was very tiny so this is the answer for it okay the question again asks selling remember if you want to know the expected selling price you first have to find the present value of the company why because they told the sale price of the coffee shop will be the sum of the present value of the predicted future cash flow understand so you need this free cash flow 296 328 so that's what they have done here 296 328 360 and 388 just take as it is after that less this is cash flow after tax okay after tax only your capital investment comes okay so your capital investment they told in point number 2 your capital investment is 60 million in year 1 and it will increase by 0.5 it will increase by 0.5 per $1 increase in after tax profit okay so here if you see this is 60 first year 60 how did you get 76 in the second year this you have to do it in excel by the way okay See, they told for one dollar increase in this one. Read again. It will increase by zero point five per one dollar increase in after tax profit. So after tax profit, just see how much it increased from three twenty eight to two ninety six. It increased by just take the difference. Increase is thirty two. So thirty two divide by two because half half of it only will increase sixteen. So sixty plus sixteen is seventy six. i understanding okay i will show you the here in excel for once okay 296 328 this is 60 okay here if you want what they did is you have to do in excel this minus this okay this minus this i'm going to put a bracket whenever you have multiple operation to do division addition subtraction together put bracket divide by 2 after you divide by 2 you add this by this number enter you see it will be added to this same way if i put here 360 Let's see. I'll drag this to the other cell and see whether it will perform the same function or not. Ninety-two. Yes, ninety-two. And here I'll put three eighty-eight. Sorry. Three eighty-eight. So here I just have to drag this to this cell. Automatically, it will take the formula. One hundred and six. You see. So. free cash flow is just you deduct your capital investment from your cash flow after tax and get it and discount factor already they have given you 10% use that 10% from the table 
multiply it, find the present value, add all and get the present value. Once you get this, remember they told after year 5 onwards, okay, they, it will increase by 3.5% forever. That is known as terminal value, okay. To get that, okay, you have to start with this year 4 free cash flow, that is 282. Not the present value. We are talking about free cash flow before you discount. Take this, increase it by 3.5%. Okay, that's why we multiplied it here by 1.035. Divide it by, this is the formula by the way we are using for terminal value. Cost of capital is 10% minus that growth into, again, why did you take this? Because you have to discount it. This is in the fifth year. You have to bring it to year zero. You have to discount everything back to year zero. And which discount factor do you, do you use? You do not go to year 5 and find for 10%. No. You use this. The one which is for year 4. The latest year that you use for year 5 onwards. Whenever a question like this comes, use this. The last year's discount factor only you have to use for the terminal value. That is 0 0.683. You understanding? If this was for year 4, then you have to use year 3's discount factor. Like that. One year less only you have to use. So this is for year 5 onwards. You are not going to go to year 5 and find the year 5 discount factor and then use it. No. You have to use one year before from year 4. That is this. This is the form method. Okay. Don't ask me why because this is the fixed method. This is how you have to find. If you are not understanding it, you have to go back to your textbook and see how terminal value is calculated. This formula is also this method is known as terminal value this is terminal value only in other words it is called as terminal value so what you do is with this you add this the first four year with the five year forever you add both the cash flow total and this is your value this is your selling price this total present value is what nothing but your say uh, price from selling of coffee shop selling price now we are coming to the second requirement impact on focus statement of financial position earnings per share VAC. okay first let's go to the statement of financial position open this okay here itself you can show the impact that's good in a way okay remember whenever okay so first part is over let's just give a minute Okay, F we'll finish one by one rather than jumping in all three and give, making you confuse. First, what we are going to do is we are going to finish with the statement of financial position. Then we'll go to EPS, then we'll go to VAC. Okay, so remember always whenever you're selling something, you have to find the profit on that. Profit or loss. Obviously, it's a profit. Otherwise, why would you sell it for a loss? Right? So, profit on sale. What is the profit on sale? See, you have already got the total present value from your first part. 3884. This is this one, okay? This is the same thing. But what is this? 3.35 million. That is the amount at which you are selling. Okay? They must have mentioned it somewhere. That you are selling it for that. Here, point number two. The current net book value of the non-current asset of the coffee shop because you're selling this can be assumed to be this. Okay. And this profit is taken in the retained earnings and retained earnings goes in the statement of financial position. That's why we are finding profit. Assets and liabilities. See, wherever changes happen, there only you have to change. Not everything will change. Okay. If you see here, adjustments will tell you where the changes are. One is non-current asset. We know this. See, take your original. What do you do? Go here. Open your three. You cannot do anything. You cannot do any changes. It's locked. You have to open a spreadsheet. Okay. Let's see whether you can copy paste or not. Close all. Copy. Paste. Yes, you can copy paste. So you can copy paste the entire thing there. Rather than typing one by one and wasting time, okay, write the original, copy paste the original. After that, next to it, put this sales adjustment final. Three more columns needs to be added. 
okay so you are selling this that's why you need to deduct it from your non current asset which will bring down your non current asset but with this you are adding this also 2184 what is this 2184 it's here see this is the profit okay non current asset investment you are also making a non current asset investment in the juice how much see this is the present value right the this one from here you are deducting 1 million 700 why 1 million 700 because they told the proceed that you have received from selling will first be used to pay the 9% loan notes the remaining would be enhancing the expenditure non current asset in the juice bar so how much is your loan note you have to go to your statement of financial position and see it is this 9% loan note is 1 million 1.7 million that's why you are deducting this 1.7 million are you understanding now from this proceed this will be added in non current asset of juice that's why you are adding it here and then you are getting the final amount so you deduct this with the original then add and you get this for current asset okay let's see how current asset this comes see this is your cash cash flow isn't it just go up what is it total present value is your cash flow so your cash will increase that's why you are adding it in the cash because of the sale okay but also you are deducting it because you are going to invest it also the entire amount that's why you are deducting it also so it will not have any impact your current asset will be same as 535 you see here other information so you are using it for this okay see you are first using where is that thing and you are going to invest it also okay you are first going to pay off that debt of 1700 okay and then you are investing it also on non current asset so entire 3884 you are investing that's why you are deducting it that means your cash is going okay now rest everything remains same retain earnings remember this profit on sale they told it will go in retain earnings so you are adding it okay and rest everything remains same the only change is this loan, loan notes it has been paid off so now nothing is there and make sure okay that this need to balance your total asset need to balance with your total equity and liabilities with the adjustment it need to balance okay now we are going to impact on earnings per share whenever you're showing impact this also needs to be done in the excel give two columns one is for current focus one is revised focused okay in the current focus we only have post tax profit which is 658 predicted post tax profit they have already given you go to other information you will get it uh, no it's not the other the, i think it's in but yes here the after tax profit including the profit on the coffee shop can be assumed to be 658 in year one if the coffee shops are not sold you see because this is current focused same will be for the revised focus you start from there okay after this you start doing adjustment so now from here you have to take out the profit from the coffee shop of the coffee shop okay which is 296 what was the coffee on the profit shop you have to go up and see Two hundred and ninety 
just wait a minute. Okay. Okay, so these are the predicted after tax profit 296. Only first year they have reduced it. Okay. Because they told that this has been assumed as 658 in year one. That's why you're deducting year once after tax profit of the coffee shop. Okay, 296. After that, remember you are paying off debt, loan of 1700. So because you are paying off that debt, now you're saving interest. You don't have to pay interest. So what is that interest? You have to add interest saved but net of tax obviously so you are paying off 1700 into 9% because 9% loan note what is the tax tax is 25% so after tax it will be into 75% hence you add it then since you are investing in non current asset you are going to get some return on that okay what was that non current asset you are investing in 2184 Go up this one okay on this you are going to earn 17% return how because they have mentioned it here in other information 17% pre-tax return after tax it means after 75% it will be 278 add it okay so adjusted profit you get adjusted profit number of shares 500 500 million what will be the adjusted eps what is the formula for eps earnings per share earnings divided by number of share that means your adjusted profit divided by your number of share 6 755 divided by 500 this is your adjusted what did you see you you saw that your eps increased improved it's better from 1.3 to 1.51 and if you see the impact on the statement of financial position also you can see this declined your assets declined equities and libraries declined okay now the third impact on VAC okay you have to write it like this impact on VAC this also you can do it in Excel I would advise you to do it in Excel what is the starting point but find all the variables there are four components that you need value of equity value of debt equity beta debt beta these are the four things you need so value of equity and value of debt that is the starting point start from there what is the value of equity for that you just simply have to take this 500 multiply it with the price and increase it by 1.05 why because it will rise because of the sale of coffee shop that's why so you can see here 500 into 8 into 1.05 this is the market price of equity coming to the market value of debt what is it you have to open your exhibit 3 and find out this one this is your market value of debt 1575 why because you only have two non-current liabilities out of that one has been paid off only one is remaining that is your bank loan 1575 hence this is your value of debt now coming to your equity beta okay your debt beta you don't have to worry about because your debt beta they have given you as uh, they have given you the pre-test cost of debt as eight percent and they told it will fall to seven percent when this has been redeemed so that they have given you only have to find the equity beta the the cost of equity to find the cost of equity you have been given the asset beta you have been given the risk free rate and this one to use cap cap m right capm capital asset pricing model so you start with asset beta this is your starting point 0.7 use that formula which formula are we talking about open your formula sheet go to the formula sheet and this formula we have been talking about this one only the first part is okay before the plus sign this only okay not the entire thing value of equity divided by value of equity plus value of debt into one minus tax into equity beta 
will give you the asset beta. But in this case, asset beta is given, you have to find equity beta. So rearrange this formula. Okay. You don't have to write the formula in the exam, just see how it has been done. So here, this is asset beta. Okay. When it is asset beta, denominator comes up, numerator goes down. So you do the opposite. You multiply it with the denominator, divide by the numerator. So in the denominator, what comes as value of equity? 4,200 plus value of debt, this one, into 1, 0, 1 minus 0 0.25 because after tax, divide by value of equity. Okay. So you get equity beta. Make sure whether your equity beta is more than asset beta or not. It always has to be that. It has to be more than 0 0.7. And this is 0 0.897. So that's correct. Now you put this equity beta in your capital asset pricing model. Okay. So 0 0.897 into re market return minus risk free. That is given, right? You see 11% and 4%. So 11 minus 4. Plus 4% risk free rate will give you the cost of equity. So now, what's next? Everything you have now do back. So cost of equity into market value of equity divided by equity plus debt, the overall value, plus cost of debt you're using 7%. Okay, here. Because they told that it will be assumed to fall to 7%. If 9% lo loan notes are redeemed. So it is redeemed, no? That's why it is 7%. If it was not redeemed, it would have been 8.8%. Uh, 8 so now use 7%. After tax, that's why 1 minus 0 0.25. Take the market value of debt, divide by equity and debt. And hence, this is your VAC. You will see one thing. Your cost of equity is the highest. Your VAC is somewhere in between. And your cost of debt is the lowest. You see, you will always find this. This tells that you are correct. You are somewhere in range. Okay. Because if you get very less, less than 7% or very high, more than 10.28, uh, then you know somewhere something is wrong. This is a hint for you, which you can use in the exam. Coming to part B. So when you are writing arguments in favor and in against, you have to put it like this in subheading, proper subheading. Okay and in different columns uh, sorry different paragraphs that means different points you are writing here i can see that there are four points that means four arguments for and four arguments against let's see the number of marks everything depend on the number of marks okay close all requirement it is almost around seven marks so that makes sense you can write four or three or three or four or four or four that is fair enough so here you have to use your word processor to type. You don't have to use Excel. Even for part C, you don't have to use Excel for advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so this, we have almost read everything. I think all the exhibits are opened. Now you have to read arguments in favor. What do you think? I will explain you the four points in four different paragraphs, but I'm not writing the answer. As you can see the answer, you can read it by yourself. The only thing is time. Timing is very important because this is the last question and most of you will run short of time to answer this, even though it looks easy. We'll run short of time. You will not be able to complete this. Forget about completing. Some of you might not be able to reach at this stage also. You must still be doing question one or uh, two, let's say, or one. That should not happen. Okay. What could be the arguments? See, one argument is cash surplus. That Okay, you will get a cash surplus. Because this you can use it for investment in the juice bar. Okay, and also you can pay off your debt. You understanding? You can see your earnings per share also improve because of that. So one is this. You are supporting the sale. Because you need cash surpluses, isn't it? If you see your cash flow, growth in cash flow. See here. If you see the growth, it has slowed down. 
so the shops themselves require more investment that means you need more cash second argument could be selling at coffee shop now will give a significant injection of cash into the juice bar business okay this can rapidly increase expand your business okay third selling the coffee shop now when there's an interest from a competitor to buy them may result in a better outcome than waiting you know your competitor is going to take so better sell it to someone else rather than being taken over by the competitor okay so some assumptions also they can talk that no premium has been added to the free cash flow to arrive at the sales price the assumptions about the rate of increase of free cash flow may be optimistic given the level of competition so delaying the same sale may show this to the case so if you delay the sale it will be more problematic for you because you are saying that you are going by the assumptions and you are being too optimistic so it's better to sell it now fourth reason is repayment of debt and hence you can lower your VAC so rather than focusing on two business focus on one coming to the arguments against the sale what do, what do you think earlier you were diversified in two business so if one business does well you can does not do well you can rely on the other now you just have to rely on the juice company because they're selling the coffee shop your risk what about the second second argument against if you see as well as reduced diversification juice bars may have too much business risk for the shareholders just profile okay currently yes it is fashionable you can see from your exhibit see make use of your exhibit okay when answering currently they are fashionable but fashion changes very quickly we know that okay third now it's up to you how many lines you want to explain it one line three line okay depending on your time but you will not be able to write so much don't worry at least write one or two points for each the main aim is completing the paper even with writing less not writing too much in one question and leaving everything else unattempted no third argument what is third argument they believe that coffee shop is less risky compared to juice company why because they are less subject to changes in fashion okay so they might feel that investing in coffee shop will give them longer term returns than the juice bar so that could be against selling fourth you can talk about calculations you can bring out calculations no worry no harm in that it's good in fact if you do that if you are short in writing remember this rule if you cannot write things think of the calculation that you have done bring it there in your answer this will save your time because you don't have to think you have already done the calculation and it's easy also something which is a number it's easy to explain understanding so it has two advantages so this doubt suggests that assumptions behind the calculations may be optimistic right you are saying that they will earn a 17% pre-tax return which is after tax it will be 12.75 on the investment in the juice but it might be very optimistic who knows you might not even receive that much return you might not even get that much sales price also for the coffee shop and also the expenditure might be higher than expected right so this other thing now let's go to the advantages and disadvantages of what forgot open the requirement don't worry multiple times you can open the requirement of the suggestion made by non-executive director what is the suggestion he told in exhibit one i've highlighted see this is what highlighting does to you immediately i know that i've highlighted somewhere your mind picks it your memory is very strong during the exam telling you you will pick it up when you have highlighted something if you don't highlight you'll be struggling and reading over and over again the paragraph searching where is it so here they told rather than selling the coffee shop entirely run it as a separate company where cc will hold a majority of share but offer a minor of shares on the stock market 
this is his suggestion so give advantages and disadvantages five marks okay so you can say let's say three advantages and two disadvantages to get the five marks or the other way around what advantages could you think of this is one advantage this is second advantage this is third advantage each advantage in different paragraph you see there's one space also they leave one space but here you see this is in one line here you see it's more than one line so it's always it could vary but the best answers are between one to five lines okay it's not more than never exit more than five lines in one paragraph because that shows you are writing too much and you will not get time to write so don't write too much in one point rather write less but write many points and cover many points that will give you more marks so the new arrangement will mean okay that you are having the same shareholder you can have shares in both the business isn't it an advantage right so you can still you will have a chance to diversify your investment you are having shares in both the company now even though it is running as a two separate company but you are still owning shares there so that's one advantage second advantage basically this is their asking advantages and disadvantages in other words of demerger that's it they didn't mention the word demerger it's the meaning of demerger only so if you have studied in your in my lecture or your textbook what are the advantages and disadvantages of demerger you will be able to answer this bit but link it to the company cc okay second asset and business of both the company will be separately visible in the new structure both will be there but it will be in it will be in a new company so clearly shareholders can see what is the contribution of the juice company what is the contribution of the coffee third advantage this arrangement may be effectively an option to delay the sale of coffee shop by going this way it will delay if you want to sell the coffee shop also you will be in a better position to understand after demerger whether you have to sell it or not okay you might even get an attractive offer also in the future who knows coming to the disadvantages what do you think here they have mentioned three disadvantages but you can write two because already three advantages you wrote because maximum mark is five so stick to the number of marks okay see if you are selling yourself partially in the coffee shop it will not raise as much fun as you will receive when you are completely selling the business that is one advantage disadvantage and amount that you have raised might also be insufficient to pay off the debt pay off the loan and you might not even have enough left to invest in the juice bar or chain also second disadvantage is proceeds may be limited by the doubts investors have about the coffee shop what is that doubt about the growth of the coffee shop right third disadvantage what is it the process that you are achieve will also depend on the percentage of shares offered to external investors okay so the larger this percentage of share the more appealing the shares might be and more money cc will be will make from offering them but in this case large minority may also have an influence on how the new company is run and be able and if it is large enough they can block the decision of the cc's both supports and it is also complicated and an expensive option if you go it like go like this so that's it for this paper i have finished the march june 2022 paper okay now it's up to you okay how you would like to attempt your afm paper in any order you can do i told you but always better to start with 50 marks question because your four professional marks are there and don't forget the report the format of the report okay so that's it and please do as many questions as possible and crack this afm exam best of luck for your afm exam